Um, I'm just back from the Great Ocean Walk, and I need to unpack my pack and clean gear out. So I want to do a quick gear review of what worked for me. Um, now, like all my gear reviews, this is just what worked for me. This isn't the lightest pack you can take. This isn't the heaviest pack. This is just what I took and what works for me. Um, we'll go through the stuff I've got sitting around first. So I normally take a pair of Havianas just to wear around camp, especially on a walk like this where I'll be at camp for, you know, three or four hours in the afternoon before going to bed. I'd like to get out of my shoes. So, yeah, they're comfy. Um, and let my, let my feet breathe. I wore, so I've got ankle socks. These are just ones I buy at Anaconda. They're mountain design. They're crew socks. Um, they're comfy. They work for me. And I wear them with um, my hocker. These are, I wore these. These are Speedgoat 5s. I've got Speedgoat 6s, but I'm just wearing out my old pair of Speedgoat 5s. These are the ones I used in the northern, through the Flinders Ranges on the Hyson. So they already had three or four hundred k's before I started. But there was no problem with them on the Great Ocean Walk. Um, having said that, it can get a bit muddy. It looks like it'll get very muddy in winter. So maybe you might want boots, but for me, I'm, I want trail runners. Um, I also took a Z-Mat. We're talking comfort here. Uh, I took a Z-Mat with me on this one. Um, I banged up my knee when I was over in Fitzgerald River months ago, and it's really hurting if I kneel on it. So I just wanted something a bit softer on the ground when I was sleeping on the ground that I could kneel on you know, before laying down. Seeing that weighs nothing. Um, I just strap it to the top of my pack. It's it's a good addition. And it adds a bit of on your sleeping mat under your quilt too if you want to use it under there. Okay. I'll get back to this. Um, oh, I haven't got my poles here. I just run a couple of lecky Kumo poles with the mountain bike gloves just to you know, protect my palms a bit. And I run a Nalgene, which I try and keep water in. It's got the graduations on the side for cooking. I normally have a Gatorade bottle with a wide brim, right neck in it to mix protein drinks or... or um, electrolytes in, um, but I, I, I throw that out after every walk, I'll recycle that after every walk, so it's already gone. All right, the pack itself is a, is the old HMG Windrider, it's about a 65 litre, done a lot of work, you've probably seen it if anyone's watched too many videos, you've seen it in all my videos, still going good, um, yeah, done a lot, a lot of Ks this pack, still waterproof. The only thing is there's a little bit of the netting where it scrapes on rocks and that as I walk past is starting to wear a bit. Might be time for a visit to remote repairs to get that fixed. Uh, this is my food bag, so I keep my food in a in a dry bag. Alright. I've got one of these little organising because the pack is a one piece job, it has not compartments, it's not any pockets. So I keep this in a um I keep this in my pack. It fits in kind of, fits perfectly in a layering type system. It's got all my odds and ends like first aid, charging gear, maybe a spare battery, snake bandage, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, and it's pretty well waterproof. It's the same material as the pack. Now, this is just some of the clothes that I wasn't wearing when I finished the walk. So when I finished the walk, I walked in a pair of um, backpack shorts and a Columbia, Columbia long sleeve top. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm mucking around with this new microphone, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. We'll see how we go. Um, that's a nitro, backpack nitro mid layer. And this is a um, Z-Pax Vertex jacket. Uh, rain jacket. It's made of Gore-Tex, but it's single layer. Does does me fine on most walks. Uh, this is just a spare dry bag that if it rains, I put my clothes in. If it doesn't rain, I don't worry about it. I, prob I took a thermal, a short sleeve thermal 
didn't really need it, probably was a passenger most of the way. It was handy when I got to Port Campbell at the end while I washed my other clothes that I had something clean I could wear around town. It's, it's almost like a t-shirt. And as far as a warm layer, um, I had my my Rab Puffy. Uh, it's getting on now. It might be due for a bit of a a trip to uh, remote repairs to get a bit of down put in and clean too soon, I think. Maybe before next winter. That's my Dyneema ground sheet for my, my duplex, my tent. So I don't take an inflatable pillow anymore. Well, not very often. I just take a pillowcase that I've got some elastic on and shove everything in there. Ground sheet, everything goes in and uh, yeah, it works all right, works good. Comfortable life for me anyway. Um, here's my buff. This is all just clothes, so sorry about that. Oh, here's my gaiters, dirty girl gaiters, some socks. I use those um, lightweight, I think they're Montaigne, yeah, Montaigne pants. Um, they're very, very comfortable. They're reinforced on the knees. So. Um, oh, here's the clothes that I actually wore. So yeah, this is uh, the Columbia shirt. I don't know where the shorts are. And this is the hoodie that I sleep in, um, in my quilt. So the quilt's got no, quilt's got no hood on it. Obviously, not like a sleeping bag. So you need something around your head. I do anyway. Another pair of socks. I took three pairs of socks on this walk because I wasn't sure how muddy it, what muddy it would be. Now here's the shorts. So yeah, these are the shorts that I wore. Yeah, they're just Mac pack shorts. This is my quilt. I need to get out anyway, so I'll undo it. In a, an event um, dry bag. So this is a, a light, I've got, this is another tier gear quilt, but this one's not really that warm. It's only good down to about uh, seven or eight degrees. So this is what my summer kind of quilt. Um, very comfy. Um, I haven't used that one as much as the one I've used on the height, the, the other one which was a bit heavier that I used on the longer tracks this year. This is just toilet paper trowel. Hand sanitizer, some wet wipes, that kind of gear. This is my toque. Um, I've got a gas bottle in there, matches, cigarette lighter, knife. So that's a titanium, titanium pot. This is my Z Packs tent. That's a duplex. That's about half a kilo with stakes. Um, and it fits across the bottom of my pack, and then I shove my mat down there, my sleeping, my um, thermarest, and it kind of fills the bottom layer of my pack. And here's, here's the thermarest. So this is a X-Therm Neoair. It's got an RV of something ridiculous, 6.9, um, but it's the only mat I've got. So it comes, well, it's the only real mat I've got. So it comes on most of my trips. I've got a little one that Sam used to use, but it's a little bit narrow for me. That's pretty much it for the contents. Um, I did forget to talk about, so I've got the inReach on the outside here with a carabiner that locks up so it can't come, it can't fall off. My glasses, my reading glasses go on the outside of this one. Put a spare battery, uh, battery bank in there and my phone goes in here. Um, and these bottom pockets, I put my torch and a set of uh, Bluetooth earphones and just my toothbrush and, and um, Aquatab pills. I didn't use a filter on this walk. I just chucked an, some Aquatab, an Aquatab pill in. Um, that kind of gear goes in that one. So, yeah, and this pack, like I said, still pretty good. I patched them up a little bit with some gaffer tape. Um, it's yeah, been remarkable, this pack, for what it... For, for a lightish pack um, to go so well, it weighs less than a kilo. It's got a frame, well, a basic frame in it. Okay. Okay, look, I'll just talk a, a little bit about logistics. Um, 
for the grade ocean walk. Um, I used and carried, believe it or not, carried a book, um, the Great Ocean Walk book by um, Julie Monday and Deborah Hayes. Um, it was, it's from about 2000 and oh, I think it's 22, so it's fairly recent. This is good if you want to, obviously do a through hike like me, but it's also good for day walking sections. So this is handy for, um, you know, overnight walkers and day walkers. It's also got a um, lot of contacts in for accommodation and transport providers and decent maps and an elevation profile. I also use Far Out and All Trails. In interestingly enough, All Trails was more accurate than Far Out on this uh, on this walk. Far Out was out a couple of times. I didn't take a map, just didn't need it. It's just not, you know, not that wild out there. And I've got a maps in here and I've got two electronic maps. Um, I didn't do food drops. Like I didn't do food drops on the Cape to Cape either. Those kind of weak, weak walks, I don't think it's worth it. Having said that, if you were going to do a food drop um, or, you know, leave some food somewhere to pick up on the way through, I guess Cape Otway or Joanna Beach would be the logical places to do it. They're about halfway. Um, you could you could work that out yourself. Um, once I was walking, once I left the Polo Bay, there's really nothing... Um, as far as to buy food on the track until you get to the visitor centre. There's, there's a little, little canteen at the, the Cape Otway Lighthouse. The cafe is inside the lighthouse grounds and you have to pay to get in there and the lighthouse itself was closed. It was closed. So, and the cafe was closed when I went through too. There's a few little odds and ends like, you know, an iced coffee or a, Snickers bar at the at the entrance station where you don't have to pay, but there's not a lot. Um, when you finish the walk at Port Campbell Visitor Centre, likewise, there's a few odds and ends there, but there's not much. Um, you need to think about transport on this walk. So I was on my own. So Sam, well, Sam dropped me off at Apollo Bay, so I walked from Apollo Bay. However, um, when I finished the walk, I was on my own at Port Campbell Visitor Centre, and that's about 11 k's along the Great Ocean Road from from Port Campbell. So I actually walked the three k's down to Lockhart Gorge with the intention of doing a walk down there, but found that half those lookouts were closed too. But I still did a three or four k walk. Left Lockhart Gorge and started walking about the last seven k's into Port Campbell and hitched, and got a ride within about oh, less than half a kilometre. Someone picked me up and took me into Port Campbell. So you're a reasonably good chance of hitching. If you're not comfortable hitching, there's a taxi in Timboon that you could ring, um, or else you'll have to organise a lift. Um, mobile coverage is some reasonable mobile coverage most days. Um, I was uploading to Facebook some photos most days, but you know, it's, it's hit and miss. It's not always at the camp, so you might have to climb a ridge behind camp or whatever. Most of the tanks have good water. Most of the, sorry, most of the camps, the walkers camps have good water. There's normally about four tanks in each walkers camp. Um, so yeah, that, that's handy to know. Although check, the longer summer goes on, the drier it is, the more chance the four tanks will run out. Um, the toilets are clean. They're composting types. They've got, they have heaps of toilet paper. Um, and the track itself was clear and not, not real muddy. Um, although it could get muddy in winter, I reckon. All right, um, that's about it for the logistics and and the dirt, so the gear. Um, I'm probably going to slot a video in once I jot down some, some stuff, um, comparing the Cape to Cape and the Great Ocean Walk, because a lot of people are asking, seeing I've done the Cape to Cape about a month ago, um, it's interesting to compare two of the premier coastal walks in Australia, I think, so hopefully that's a shorter video than this one, though. All right, I'll catch up with you next time.